Okay, well, we have a problem with the Nissan Altima. My mom's car is not coming out of park when the car's on and the brake is pressed. Um, I did a little research online and figured out that there's a part underneath here um, that uh, the metal fatigues over time and uh, you don't need to replace the part, you just need to kind of repair it. So I'm gonna go through now and remove the entire center console. So I've got my panel removal kit um, and I've got a stubby Phillips head and a long reach uh, Phillips head. We'll see how this goes. Funny enough, I'm already stuck and I've just removed the rear panel. I cannot, for the life of me, figure out how this thing is supposed to come out. You can see I've gummed it up a little bit. I can't seem to release it for some reason. Uh, I've given up. This isn't that important. I'm not even sure what that is plugged in for. There's nothing there um, that I can tell. There's no light or anything like that. I think it's there for like an accessory that would normally be back here. Maybe some USB chargers or something or another cigarette lighter. But anyway, it's not there. Um, so I figure I'll just leave it. And you can see I've got to remove some screws that are blocked by the seats. Actually, that turned out to be pretty straightforward. Those two, you can see where the screws were. And now the whole console is up, so I know the, the back end is detached. Let's go ahead and work on the front. I'm going to start with removing that gear shift knob. Well, remove all the gear shift knobs pretty straightforward actually. There's just like a little retaining clip right here. I'm going to use a pair of needle nose so I can hang on to it and I don't lose it when it pops off. I should probably move this out of park. The car's not on. Um, there's a little um, a shift lock feature here that allows you to bypass the sensor that's not working right now. And if I engage that by pushing it down, I'm just using a screwdriver to push it down right now. It should allow me to release, yeah, release the brake. All right, so it's out of park. Uh, the e-brake is obviously on, or the car would be rolling right now. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna leave it in neutral. So when I remove the console, it just comes straight up and out. All right, now I've got the gear shifter out of the way. I can start to remove these panels here they should start to come out. Oh. oh wait, it looks like these trim pieces need to come out before I take those panels out. So I've got my final trim and removal pieces. Let's see, probably it doesn't. First, it appears. And this guy's stuck in here. It's okay, as long as it's out of the way. Interesting. So, this side, uh, the bezel came off really easy. I was able to pop a little floor panel off. You can see it over there. And then, there's some muscling 
if they want to get this piece off, which was tucked up under here, but this piece here on the driver's side it was just impossible. So to get it free so that it's not obscured when I pull this console out, I had to pop this panel out just enough. There's like some sensors connected to it that I can't unplug easily at least. So I'm not gonna fuck with it anymore. I was able to pop this off and get it enough out of the way that it won't block the console now when I lift it up and out. Alright, so it's, it's freaking blazing hot here. Um, but it's good for me. Alright, continuing on. So just like in the back where there are those two side screws coming in from where the seats are, there's two, it looks like two Phillips head screws. You can see the hole right there. And I'm gonna take that one off and that's where my long reach is coming in handy. I use the stubby in the back and the long reach in the, in the front. As with most projects like this, everything goes, never goes quite the way that you're thinking. Um, I thought I could lift this center console up and I can. I can lift it up and get it out of the way. I was able to lift it up about this tall and look underneath. Unfortunately, there's so many harnesses, uh, cable harnesses that are plugged into the seat heater switches. And I guess the lights uh, for the transmission uh, that I can't reach. So I gotta try to figure out something else. So um, I tried removing these side pieces and they pop up, but um, they don't pop out of the way and I'm afraid I'm gonna break them if I pull any harder. But I was able to, and it appears shimmy this centerpiece out now. I hope I don't crack it, because it's, it's tweaking here. Um, but I'm gonna give it a go here and see what I can do uh, to get underneath this part so that I can remove the, the cables that are connecting all of this equipment underneath. And then I should be able to pull this console out. I'm, I'm starting to think that there's like a whole mechanical engineering subsection at Nissan trying to figure out how to put these panels in and make them secure. This one, I kind of out of breath. To get this thing out, as I started to lift this piece out, I noticed that there were these little clips here. So, you know, I was able to apply a little bit more force to try to pop it up um, but back here I couldn't get it out and that's when I started pulling it and you can see this little rail here it's like not only is there a clip in there but once you free the clip this piece goes about that far in to the console unbelievable so once I figured that out it was actually pretty easy I just slid it out of the way and it popped right up. What a pain in the ass. Oh my god. All right. At last, I have the mechanism here completely exposed. And the part that is failing from what I was seeing is, is way down underneath this. So thought maybe I could get to it without having to remove all the linkage for the transmission and everything, but again, this thing is not, it's not as easy as it appears, and it looks like I have to go deeper to figure out how to get all of this out of the way. Even though I've disconnected the wires, there's still that cable that goes to the back, which doesn't appear to be connected to anything, but it's back there and it's in the way. And it's blocking me from being able to lift this completely up and out to get to this unit here, which I need to apparently take apart to get underneath it. All right, we'll see how this goes. Okay, center console is out. 90% of the difficulty with this operation so far have been these cable disconnects. The problem is I don't know don't know how they come apart. Each one seems to have a slightly different release mechanism. Um, so you can see like that one 
there's like a little gray part that you push when it's inside. This harness over here, there was no way for me to see the little tab because it was sitting down connected to one of the trim panels, which I couldn't get off. Um, it was actually behind that. Uh, so there was no way for me to know how that came apart. And there's not enough slack, as you can see, for me to lift the console up out of the way. Anyway, this one here had a completely different little release mechanism and they zip tied it to the trim. Um, so it's basically stuck there. Unless I want to cut that zip tie off, which I don't really need to. It's just amazing to me that every single one of these connectors has had a slightly different way of doing it. And me not knowing what that, that method is um, makes it impossible uh, for me to... Tr I just have to sit there through trial and error, jiggle it, feel around, grab it, squeeze it, <laughs> press it with my fingernail, everything I can think of to try to release it anyway so all of that's off and i should be good now to get underneath you know i thought i'd take a moment since i was just trying to describe this contraption to my mom she seems somewhat interested so now that all of this is exposed i can show her there's a little electric actuator here um when you push the brake if it is working um, it engages a sensor on the other side here that activates this little piston and it pulls that in. When it pulls that in, it actually frees up this deal to come up and out. So actually, you know what? This is the relay right there. That's the relay that's bad. So I don't need to take this all apart. I just need to fix that, I think. Another, there's another one back here. Okay, no, I'm wrong. It's it's the one back here that's the problem. Yeah, it's underneath. I can feel it. All right. Anyway, so when you're doing that that release with the screwdriver, what you're doing is you're just skipping that and forcing it out of place. But this is the part here that is keeping it locked. So when it's in park. This is all the way forward. You can see here, I can't, I can't get it out of park unless that little piston is released. Or sorry, uh, unless this, this piece here is released. Once that's released, then when I engage it, let me see if I can make it visible here. You can see here how I'm pushing it down But when that's there, you can see that when I push the button down, it's trapped on that piece of vinyl there until that vinyl is completely out of the way. All right, so anyway, just thought I'd show that because it's pretty, pretty interesting. All right, it's a 10 millimeter uh, nuts on this thing to take off. This is all free. I'm gonna take it. The linkage to the transmission. Like so. Now I should get left this uh, another little piece that's like a what is that? That's some kind of trim piece. One of those little plastic screw and remove kind of things. a screw, just a plastic screw. Let's see if this comes out. Oh, I see. <laughs> it is a trim piece, but... Alright, so that's out of the way. I gotta remember to plug that in. God, all these stupid 
zip ties holding all the cables in place. I mean, if I break them, I don't have other pieces that are like them. I believe. Let's see what this thing is. Something out. Perfect. And where's my little relay that I need to fix? basically the same exact relay that we saw earlier up here so it's this thing this little piece of metal here that little thin piece of metal just gets fatigued maybe heat or something so I'm going to attempt to get that thing out of there and then I'll take another video of me fixing it okay it's actually pretty easy to get out of there it just is held by these, these little white plastic clips, kind of position it up in this little piece of black plastic like that. So you just squeeze those retaining clips and it pops right out, easy enough. Um, so that's our culprit, that stupid little thing. What I'm going to do, so the brake isn't engaging it. You know, I think just to test this, I'm going to plug everything back in, turn the car on, press the brake, and see what happens here. Because that, that looks pretty healthy to me. That doesn't look like could be an issue. Well, it does need to travel quite a bit before it engages. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna test it real quick because I don't want to bend it and put it all back and have it not work and have to do this again. Um, so I'm gonna plug a, some of the power in again and see if I can get this thing to work without doing anything first. And then if it doesn't work, then I'll try to bend it back in place. All right, let's give it a try. So when I turn the car on, my foot is on the brake. works, the relay works, it is just this metal is just not, so you can see how much it has to travel. I can move it, all of that, without actuating it. That's not good. So I'm just going to bend this metal back into place and it should fix the problem. And then I'll test it one more time before I put everything back together. Now if only I could figure out how to disable that beeping. That is really annoying. Okay, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, good. All right, here we go. 
you know, I was going to do a before and after, but it might be kind of hard to tell. So I'm going to see if I can hold the camera here while I fix it. Yeah, I can hold the camera. All right, so what I'm going to do is I want to exaggerate that bend so that it makes contact with that release or the, uh, the relay a little bit sooner than it does now. It has to travel too much to really engage that. Um, let's see, let me use needle nose. Where did I put those? That would have been good to have those ready to go. But I'm not sure what I did. There we are. All right. So I'm gonna hold that. that into a contact position and I'm going to bend this metal up about oh, not that much. About like maybe like that. Alright. I may have done it a little bit too much. So I'm gonna see if I can get it back. That feels pretty good, actually. All right, I'm gonna put it all back together now and test it. All right, so these are the two retaining clips. They're like just press fit, and then these are pieces just to keep it in the right position. So the piece is back in place. I'm just gonna kind of set it down. I don't really need to do much plug the power back in here. Let's give it a go. Foot is on the brake. And you can see now when I press the brake, it's actually releasing as it should. And I can get the car into gear. Awesome. All right, I'm done. I'm gonna put everything back together. So everything just goes back the way or in reverse the reverse sequence. Starting with the four nuts to hold the shifter down in place. And then I have to reconnect the linkage for the transmission. And it's nice and greasy, of course, and I don't have any rags with me. And some rags because this is going to be grungy as I put everything back. Actually, I'm going to test it one more time just in case. Foot is foot is on the brake. You can see as I put my foot on the brake, it should yeah. So as I press my foot on the brake, you can see it's now engaging, which it wasn't before. We were having to bypass it by pushing this down to engage it. So yeah, it's just that little metal tab, so ridiculous. It's funny how quickly you can forget how all this stuff goes back together. <laughs> because I left this connected, I got the, uh, I put the center console in on top of that and started to connect everything up <laughs> and realized that I still hadn't figured out a way to get this out. So I had to kind of rethink it and sort through how this all fit back together. Anyway, um, so I just got it up and in place. It's ready for the two front screws. there and then one on that side. I already connected the primary harness. I'm going to go back through all these other cables and I 
I think these plug into maybe the piece that's in the back seat somewhere. Pretty sure. I don't know. I'll figure it out as I go. But uh, yeah, it's just a it's a pretty straightforward process of just putting everything back where it belongs. Which I guess may be simpler than I, I think sometimes. But I'll keep going. Okay. So it's uh, so hot in here, my phone overheated. Um, so I couldn't record what I did to put everything back together, but um, I don't really need to. It, it was a pain in the butt just trying to figure out the sequence. So I had to do it a couple different times um, to get this top piece, this wooden piece, and this side cowl for the primary center console. I had to try it a couple different ways before they would go in the right sequence um, because of how these trim pieces slot into this but under this <laughs> and then the these things this thing has connectors over here for the seat heaters um, that need to be connected before uh, anyway through some trial and error i was able to get everything back together it's really freaking hot in here i had a couple of laughing spells trying to figure it out um, but uh, all good all right i'm gonna give it a go so power on it's asking me to apply the brake so i apply the brake the car starts if i take my foot off the brake it's locked it won't shift if i put my foot on the brake i can even feel it engage and we are finally set so yeah my mom's been complaining about this for a long time um and i guess she had gone to the dealership they said it was going to be about six hundred to a thousand dollars to replace uh this unit here um i did a little research and i'll list on the video a couple of the guys that helped me with this a couple of their youtube videos were very helpful um and uh there you have it now i guess the way she was getting this thing to work before is just whacking the crap out of it so now i need to find her a new shift so i think that whole thing took me about um, well, a little under an hour and 45 minutes. Um, my first time really working on an, like an Asian import like this. Um, not too complicated, but it did require, um, patience for sure. I'm used to my, uh, my German and vintage American cars, but, um, I think anybody could tackle this job. And if you're a decent, halfway decent mechanic, you could probably do it, uh, the repair in under an hour. That's pretty straightforward.